I loved thee from the earliest dawn, when first I saw thy beauty's ray, and will until life's eve comes on and beauty's blossom fades away, and when all things go well with thee, with smiles and tears, remember me. I'll love thee when thy morn is past, when wheedling gallantry is o'er, when youth is lost and age is blast and beauty can ascend no more. And when life's journey ends with thee, oh, then look back and think of me. I'll love thee with a smile or frown, mid sorrow's gloom or pleasure's light. And when the chain of life runs down, pursue thy last eternal flight. When thou hast spread thy wing to flee, still, still a moment wait for me. I'll love thee for those sparkling eyes to which my fondness was betrayed, bearing the tincture of the skies to glow when other beauties fade. And when they sink too low to see, reflect an azure beam on me. Early Affection by George Moses Horton Born a slave on William Horton's tobacco plantation, George Moses Horton taught himself to read. Around 1815, he began composing poems in his head, saying them aloud and selling them to an increasingly large crowd of buyers at the weekly Chapel Hill Farmers Market. Students at the nearby University of North Carolina would buy his poems and lend him books. As his fame spread, he gained the attention of Caroline Lee Whiting Hintz, a novelist and professor's wife who transcribed his poetry and helped publish it in her hometown newspaper. With her assistance, Horton published his first collection of poetry, The Hope of Liberty, in 1829, becoming the first African-American man to publish a book in the South and one of the first to publicly protest his slavery in poetry. Horton hoped to earn enough money from the publication of his book to buy his freedom, but his attempts were denied despite significant support from members of the public, including the governor. He learned to write in 1832. In the early 1830s, with a weekly income from his poems of at least $3, Horton arranged to purchase his time from his owner and become a full-time poet, handyman, and servant at the university. He continued to buy his own time for more than 30 years while publishing a second collection of poetry, The Poetical Works, in 1845 and continuing to appeal for his freedom. After the Civil War, Horton traveled with the 9th Michigan Cavalry Volunteers throughout North Carolina. During those travels, he composed the poems that make up his third collection, Naked Genius, in 1865, published in Raleigh. After 68 years as a slave, he settled in Philadelphia for at least 17 years of freedom before his death, circa 1883. His legacy is celebrated by the residents of Chatham County. He is the namesake of Horton Middle School. June 28th was declared George Moses Horton Day in 1978, and in 1997 he was declared the historic poet laureate of Chatham County. Horton's poetry is featured in the Norton Anthology of African American Literature, and in 1996, he was inducted into the North Carolina Literary Hall of Fame. A selection of his poems appears in The Black Bard of North Carolina, George Moses Horton and His Poetry.